is the Gen X Gamer Podcast News Update Edition. Welcome. This is Kid Aquarius, one of your hosts. Accompanied with me today is the other host, Nightshade. Welcome, Nightshade. All right. It seems like forever since we've been here together, but uh, uh, times have been uh, passing us by. We haven't been able to get in the right moment, but we're uh, here again, ready to go. We have been playing a lot of Apex together and looking forward to some uh, special Apex program coming soon with season three up. But uh, let's uh, dive into some uh, news stories. Yeah, yeah. We uh, we plan on doing an Apex episode to uh, kick off season three. That will be coming very shortly after this one. So look out for that. And while you're here with us today, don't forget it's important to hit the subscribe button, follow us, like us, do all of those things that give us warm, fe fuzzy feelings inside. But we are apologizing for the hiatus. I did happen to lose my good old friend, my sidekick of many, many, many years, my trusty companion dog, Charlie. And that kind of threw me for a loop for a few days, but I'm excited to be back here, Nightshade. And it sounds like you are raring to go with some news stories. Is that correct? Let's do it. So we're sticking to the one minute uh, presentation and a little bit of rebuttal after that, just so you see what we're gonna do. It's time for gaming news in a minute. Here we go. All right, uh, do you exercise during this COVID-19 thing or? How do you exercise when you're gaming all the time or when you're working all the time or when you're stuck in house, in your house, when you're working remotely? Um, a lot of different things coming out now and anything that comes out that's new is sold out immediately. One of them is called Play Pulse One. It's an all-in-one exercise spike. It looks like it's from the future. It's got a homemade video game console, with special monitor on it, whole entertainment system. The handlebars are actually like a joystick. That was pretty interesting. Um, it's a little uh, high, it's like $2,000, but they were all sold out the minute they were announced. And uh, for me, I have a, a, a treadmill desk, and so I walk all day. I hate the standing desk, I tried that. When I'm watching movies or playing games, sometimes I'll use an elliptical, you know, that kind of stair stepper thing. But uh, you know, during this time, you gotta find your own way to stay healthy and, and feel like you're exercising while you're playing some video games or watching movies. What do you think? Well, hey, first of all, congratulations. You were under a minute there, Chris. <laughs> Ring the bell. Yes. Yeah, right. Hey, you know, so what, what is this thing exactly? What, what, what is it? It's so it's that you exercise. No, no, this, this one is an exercise bike. There's all these different ones. There's even, you know, little pedals that just go under your desk. This one is like a full on kind of looks like a Tesla designed uh, all in one exercise bike. It's got a giant screen and then the handlebars are like these specialized key key uh my controller and it has its own operating system and its own like games which i think is its downfall is because uh, i don't want a, a sort of sub operating system i want it to connect to my xbox or my pc but uh yeah i mean that's that's yeah. that's clever obviously you know exercising in a world like ours right now is a big deal i have my pandemic pounds that I am trying to lose before the end of 2021. 2020 added at least 20 pounds. So it is, uh, it is uh, the struggle is real for sure. And uh, for those who are in front of the screen all day long for work and then your hobby is to game as well. Yeah, that, that's a tough one. Yeah, for me working remotely, I, I, I use my desk treadmill. So I walk uh, miles and miles every day. And so I'm actually doing a lot better than when I was in the office. And uh, you know, I, have, I do a keto and intermittent fasting and so I, I have more trouble keeping on the weight than anything else. But <laughs> I know we all have our own issues. Yeah, right. Listen, <laughs> all of us Gen Xers that are watching this video have no sympathy for you. Okay, right. new, next story. Here we go. Start the clock. All right, started. Okay, so my first story is near and dear. It is about Apex, and we already told you that we have a, a, a new video coming up on the upcoming season. Season 8 is coming to a close, and with it, the storyline of Maggie and Fuse, which, spoiler alert, spoiler alert, did she fall to her death? I hope so, because two Aussie accents is a way overplay. Anyway, new season coming, new characters, all of that, great what I want to talk about is the nerf that is uh, speculating to be coming to one of our core Apex players. The one that even the shysty players can take on to at least help out their teammates. I'm, of course, talking about Lifeline. Lifeline's rumored to have her healing shield nerfed. 
it was epic when you could send your trusty robot to heal the wounded with a shield that blocked all incoming fire. The improvement was a game changer for Lifeline. I feel like if they are going to get rid of it, that they need to do something else to boost her up a bit. Maybe something extraordinary in the care packages she drops, because let's face it, right now, does anyone even take something from one of her drops? Comments? I sure don't. I mean, I I, I often play with a, a Loba, um, a, you know, a teammate. And so th there's just nothing but exciting gold items all over the place. And I, I play Lifeline a lot. And my drops are mostly, uh, you know, more health packs, shield cells and other things that aren't that exciting. And so I'm, I'm kind of sad that she'd be nerfed. She well, doesn't it's, have, it's, yeah. Yeah, Go I ahead. mean, the nerf would be the shield. You're yeah. right. Like, like, that's her buffest thing. The drops just don't seem like they do anything. So I feel like they need to counteract nerfing the shield um, that blocks incoming fire by just upping that care package drop. Because, yeah, like you said, right now, you don't take anything from it. Right. And, and if they're actually going to make that weaker or get rid of it, that's sort of her main thing. And I don't see it being abused or that powerful by teams. So uh, they would really need to make something exciting and new to make her still keep as, as an attractive character. I know she has the small, what, smallest uh, body, her and um, uh, some others, the smallest body hitbox. And so that's a big thing, but uh, she needs a little more flavor if they're gonna get rid of that. Amen, brother. Okay, let's jump to the next. Let me reset, see if I can actually do a minute twice in a row here. Uh, so I don't know if you saw, but the Neuralink, uh, which is another company owned by uh, Elon Musk, uh, they developed this fully implanted wireless high channel, high channel brain machine interface. You know, it goes into your brain. It's like the step towards, uh, you know, your your brain being half cyborg, half computer. And they've, they've wired it up to this uh, monkey, Rhesus Macaw. And uh, the thing is really good at playing Pong. And, you know, in the video, they teach it how to play Pong and then some other games with the controller. And it, it loves to play it. It gets there and it's like rocking out. And then they, they take out the controller and the monkey just keeps on doing it, the, the stuff just as well. And, you know, playing Pong better than I could with a controller. And uh, they're looking at using this to help people who are paralyzed in different ways and using your own body without robotic help, you'd be able to start walking. But I see it as more the step to the cyborg brain. Um, have you heard of that, Corey? Uh, no, two, two, two stories under a minute, Chris. <laughs> Impressive. Hey, so actually I have heard a little bit about it. I did read uh, some headlines. I didn't dive deep into the story. I guess the one thing that really gave me pause in that story is that you made it seem like it was a big deal that the monkey could play Pong better than you. Yes, I mean, <laughs> and this was some of the reviews I saw said, you know, you, you think it would like, it'd be functional, but the, the monkey was like slamming. He's like getting some high scores and like, uh, you know, that, that helps take it to the next level. Maybe I should play my apex with something in my brain. Maybe that's my problem with my slow reflexes. <laughs> yeah, you need to get on. You need, we, we need to have Elon Musk try some of those things out on you now. Uh, right, there's gotta be some humans that are like dying to sign up for it. You know, it's, it's got all these different parts that go into your brain. They're like smaller than a thread and link up and then you control part of your right half of your brain and left half and you, your whole body can move and do all these things and i, I mean, do it I yeah right do, i don't have wife and kids my dogs are dead i'll i'll do it right it's gotten to the point if that if that monkey can do it it's gotta it's gotta be so you know somebody's gotta try it first so i agree i, agree. <laughs> I don't know nice if i'm ready to sign up but okay start the clock sir chris all righty okay warzone fans verdansk it's gone, right? New Warzone map. It released today. Verdansk was invaded by zombies, and after the great nuke events from the last few days, the zombies are gone. And what are we left with? The new map for Season 3. What? <laughs> I'm so mad. What the F? I mean, is this like Ocean's 13? Why are we doing this again? We've been playing in Verdansk for, for whatever. It, it feels like forever. I appreciate that, but the new map is just Verdansk reformatted. I appreciate the time they put into it, changing up the locations, making a making a few tweaks here and there, but why not get something new in there? Is Verda Verdansk the only setting the Warzone can take place in? Apex has created, they've generated three distinct maps with their own storylines, and now the game can rotate between them. I don't understand why Call of Duty couldn't generate a completely new season three map for us to enjoy. Yeah, right. I mean, I've heard a lot of people say um, 
I want to play Warzone, but I don't want to play Verdansk. You know, I'm ready for that next map. And if, if it's just sort of mixed around and like Verdansk 2, it, it, it is kind of disappointing. Um, I, I love on Apex that you're you're going in between three different worlds. Right now, one of them is not really in the, the lineup, but they're so different. And when it changes, you're like, oh, it's the new map. And I'd like to see that in Verdansk. I know Warzone's got it going if you, you've got the paid version in the multiplayer. And I don't know why they can't import some of those or use some of that creativity to for the battle royale system exactly exactly i'm glad we feel the same did you know that it was just going to be did, did you did i pronounce it wrong gosh there goes nightshade oh, correcting I, me on my pronunciation. no i have no idea i'm sorry oh really <laughs> like my okay, bird, if it's so, real did yeah. you know that the new map was going to just be verdansk uh reformatted with new you know i had seen that and i, and I saw something is it even a new map it's it's just uh it's like the next Verdansk, yeah. Verdansk, or however you it, say it. It really is the same thing. Just, you know, they've taken certain areas. They've obviously added stuff to it and taken stuff away and things like that. But it, yeah, it still feels the same. That's what I'm concerned about. Everything. Yeah, there's just a hole here or a new building there. And it's it's not like in an Apex when they have the next map and the next season. It's like, you know, some huge bomb blew up half the map and, you know, entire things grow out. And it's it's pretty different and it's worth exploring. Yeah. But, I uh, mean, the first one, Kings Canyon, it's a whole desert environment like Southern Utah. Mm -hmm, and then you've mm -hmm. got the next one, which I already forgot the name of it, but you got the lava pits and the train that's rotating around. And then the third one is the Olympus is the cloud city. I mean, yeah. talk about three distinct maps. Right. It feels like different games. If you were just to look at the map that they have such a distinct feel to, to the world that you're running around in, you could almost see some stories coming to life there. But for Danks, I just... Uh, I want to get it out of my head and see something fresh and new with Amen. no cheaters involved. <laughs> Freaking Call of Duty. You're up, Nightshade. All right. Let me see if I can do three in a row here. Okay, so I don't really play mobile games. I know it's huge for a lot of people, but I do love Rocket League. And Rocket League is coming out with its own um, free version of uh, mobile, Rocket League Mobile. It's going to be one-on-one -on -one or two versus two matches, and you're sort of swiping across, you know, uses the phone in an amazing you know, way, I guess. I'm not totally excited to dive into it. Maybe I, I don't spend a lot of time, like, sitting in the doctor's office with nothing to do, or uh, maybe I listen to audio books on my phone or something like that instead. But I know, like, Call of Duty Mobile is huge. PUBG's mobile has just announced it had over 1 billion downloads. And so I know there's a lot of people that maybe can't afford a system, don't have a system, and that phones are the world. So I, I, how about you, Corey? I know you, you did an episode before on, like, uh, some mobile games and iPad games, but... Yeah, well, hey, uh, you know, I think Rocket League has such a following that it is going to be able to transcend whatever system it puts it on mm -hmm. and uh, being able to expand to mobile platforms way to go uh rocket league i think that's exciting would i ever play it no but that has more to do with my skill level right like i already need glasses <laughs> focusing i've been spoiled with my huge tv and my huge screens trying to focus mm -hmm. in on like a, a tiny to telephone screen or iPad screen to play a game like uh, that, it would be difficult. I, I wouldn't enjoy it as much. However, do I think people will? Totally. As I've mm -hmm. traveled um, both domestically and internationally, I frequently, like even traveling the trains in Japan, I would, uh, I would sit next to these teenagers on the train and I would see them on their games and they're playing shooter games, games that I could never in a million years play on a mobile phone and here i am watching him play like call of duty or PUBG or something like that Fortnite, and and they're playing it on that tiny screen and doing you know a bang up job at it and so i'm sure that rocket league will it'll have a place and do it'll do really well that's awesome and it is very different i think than the normal game you're not going all around the map and having very very tiny cars it's sort of like almost a 2d version where you're mm. you're just shooting past one person but i'm sure they'll bring in the physics i know the physics in rocket league is just so awesome and it's and, what you know, sets it apart very smart yeah and i imagine that that will be something that makes it a you know a hit mobile game as well so cool love it you're up okay start the timer here we go right. i have stumbled across my new favorite game and i don't even know what to say about it i don't know how to explain it i don't know how to play it and I don't even know if I can afford it, but I'll be damned if I'm not going to try. For a gambling poker player addict like myself, I have under I have uncovered what 
the next few years of my life is going to look like. It's digital horse racing. Z racing to be more specific. This Australian based gaming company has used NFT to create a horse racing community, which buys and breeds horses using cryptocurrency. And then as in real life, horses compete in actual digital events, stables attempt to breed championship bloodlines, and all of it is bartered and sold in an online market system. I've been shopping horses now in the evenings for hours on end looking for a colt or a filly that's going to be the first stable horse of the Kiddick stables. Then in three years when my horse is like worth a hundred times what I paid for it, I'm going to sell it for rid ridiculous amounts of Ethereum. What do you think, Nightshade? Wow. Wow. Okay. I wasn't expecting that. That's exciting. Um, I, right? I know when, when I was in Japan, you know, they have the game centers everywhere, still the arcades. They're kind of a uh, a, a relic here but there and a lot of them a huge part of it is like uh they'll have these virtual horse racing games and there'll be people you know a lot of adults you know older guys smoking and just all around these machines and just putting in money and screaming as the virtual horses go by and so yeah. it, it's exciting to see it take it to that next step and so wow. what's crazy about this is that this company that they pretty much looked at what you know casinos were doing because casinos had had digital race horsing for a long mm -hmm. time and i think they looked at it and said what what's going on here like this could be done way better and so they created this this community in this forum where instead of having the casinos just have these random horses that they owned and created these races that people could bet on they created a forum where well why don't we have actual people out there buy these horses and they will be the owners of them and they can breed them just like real, real life horse racing. That's, a, that's kind of what it is. Mm. And you buy it using Ethereum. And then since Ethereum prices are soaring, you're actually just investing in something that's going to be worth more anyway. And uh, it's, it's pretty incredible. As I dive into this thing, it's a little overwhelming, but it's exciting. So and so the, the races happen, like, it's, not, it's not like a game, I guess. It's more like a community or in the race. It is a happen. community and there's races happening all the time. And wow. you pay to uh, in, to put your horses in those races and uh, and you even get money for them coming back out. Um, and uh, yeah, it's it's pretty intense. And, and how, how does your horse develop? In what way? I like mean, like brain, you mean? I mean, you 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 like uh, have some kind of training plan, or like change the food, or no, or... no, you don't need to worry about that. That the the variables that come into play is that there's four different breeds of horses, and each horse, each breed is good for different things, right? And mm -hmm. then as as there's there's uh, what they call the Genesis horses, which there's a finite number of Genesis horses that will ever be created and mm. then all other horses are spawned from those horses and depending on how far away they get from the lineage will those those traits and characteristics that make them the top of the class will be diluted and uh and so it does create kind of a system of of top tier horses you know i think there's there's kind of like five five racing tiers or classes that that horses can jump into it's it's pretty complex i'm you know wow. there's there's youtube videos out there yeah. right now that that would already go into it i feel like i'm getting in on it not at the ground level because it's uh -huh, actually uh -huh. been around for a year and a half uh -huh. but i feel like it's early enough that you could kind of get your get your hands into it before it becomes huge because i feel like it wow. is like uh kind of a new frontier where it could really take yeah. off is there something with the jockeys you don't like race your own horse or anything like that no no you don't Z Z racing for anybody who wants to look into Z it z-e-d oh okay yeah exciting there you go. wow i was i knew that story was going to come out of left field at you yeah but that sounds fun i don't i'm scared to get into it but it sounds i think it's right up your alley hey nightshade what's that below you oh it's a button it's a button that you can press to subscribe to the gen x gamer uh podcast and youtube channel so please hit that button subscribe to us and uh we'll be excited to keep pushing out new content for you yes we'll uh, catch you very soon again okay sounds good thanks all